Good afternoon and welcome back to By Any Greens Necessary. Uh, I'm your host, Melvin Thompson. I'm the executive director of the Andaleo Institute. Andaleo is a member organization of Trinity United Church of Christ at 400 West 95th Street uh, in the wonderful community of Washington Heights. Uh, we are so delighted that you came back to join us. As usual, before I introduce our wonderful guests, I always do a, uh, a market recap of, of the past market last Saturday. And I can say one thing, that um, the mantra of rain or shine was never more pronounced than Saturday because we didn't have rain, we had torrential rain. And yet, uh, our farmers, our, all of the black farmers that we have at our market stayed the entire time. Our customers, while, while we didn't have our normal, uh, just over 200, I think we had just over 100, we really appreciate um, the dedication and the diligence. Our vendors stayed the course, so I'm, I'm just thrilled that uh, everyone came out um, because as as will will happen uh the sun did eventually come out and we extended the hours of the market to uh, i believe by about an hour so we were quite pleased with that and um it, it it's just wonderful it's amazing that this is i believe our eighth show we've got about five more market days so please we urge you to come out uh, support us we're located at 95th and normal um, directly across the street from the church you can't miss us um, this is a live call-in show if you have any comments or questions about the market or for our wonderful guests you can call us at 312-738-1060 that's 312-738-1060 and with that, I want to introduce our wonderful guest. Um, we always have outstanding guests every week here at By Any Greens Necessary, and today is no exception. Um, today we have Miss Pamela Johnson, who is the national, national vice president of markets. Uh, um, did I say that right? Multicultural, Multicultural markets. Multicultural markets uh, for the American Heart Association. Pamela, welcome. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. You know, every time we have an outstanding guest uh, on this show, um, and the double bonus is that um, each each guest um, look reflects the community that we serve in Washington Heights. And I always like to ask our guests what your path was um, to where you are now because you're doing things at such a high level nationally but you're impacting at the grassroots level and that in itself is a story uh i, I will say full disclosure pamela is a trinity member uh and she knows that uh one of the the, the sayings that you will hear at trinity is that you can't be who you can't see and so uh, for the young people that are watching or maybe your parents that are watching um, Pamela just give us a little background on you and how you ascended um, to where you are today happy to do so um, first of all very proud to be a Trinity member yes um, secondly to say that you know I had the great fortune of growing up in a in a in a community that uh, really focused on community development and empowering our young people and so I did have those role models growing up mm -hmm. and so that was really instilled in me that it wasn't ever about me but it was about what I can do to help others and so my parents were very instrumental in that and mm -hmm. so when when I graduated from high school and went to college, um, you know, I said my passion was around numbers, analytics. Mm -hmm. um, and so I actually became an accountant. And wow. so, right, I became an accountant, but I was bored um, <laughs> because I didn't like the repetition and I wasn't mm -hmm. really, I knew it wasn't my passion. So I actually, um, when I came to the American Heart Association, it was my third job, fourth job out of um, college. I actually started grad school and I focused on marketing. Mm -hmm. And I, um, while I was at American Heart, I was going to grad school, got my MBA, and I transitioned into marketing. Mm -hmm. So I actually started over in my career. And what I found was that my passion was using my analytical skills to impact change. Sure. And so I accomplished that really through you know, here's the market data about our communities, mm -hmm. but what strategies are we going to put in place to affect change? Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I've been able to do at the Heart Association is really not by myself, but through a wonderful team of great staff mm -hmm. and volunteers. Our whole entire organization is driven by volunteers. Mm -hmm. but. Th 
our volunteers understanding that we could not improve the health of everybody unless we could really focus in on those that were underserved and that had the greatest risk for cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. So the fact that our volunteers actually changed our um, health impact goal to improve the health of all Americans by 2020, that was significant. So that means that we will not be successful as an organization unless mm -hmm. we improve those the health of those that have the greatest risk. So that is what I am responsible for is how we impact multicultural individuals, specifically uh, people of color mm -hmm. and those that are underserved. And sometimes those are not the same, <laughs> um, but really how do we um, really talk about creating equity, sustainable equity um, with communities of color sure. and underserved communities. You know, and that's great, I'm glad you you, you mentioned that because we talked about it in the green room about health equity and I'm mm -hmm. going to ask you to give us a broad definition in case some of my viewers haven't heard that term before. Um, I, I'm noticing um, in, in just working with you um, at Andaleo and uh, over the last couple of years that it seems the American Heart Association has shifted to becoming more synonymous with community. Can you tell us, you know, when that that shift began mm -hmm. to take place? Did, were you responsible for that? <laughs> uh, uh, or, 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 you know, what? Because a lot of times organizations, um, national organizations, kind of work from a very high perch and don't necessarily reach the community, mm -hmm. but that's not the case with AAH. Uh, well, so great observation, first of all, because that means that what we are doing from a community standpoint is working mm -hmm. um, because we have had a shift. I would say that when we embarked upon our 2020 goal, that's where we really started to shift and move toward having a community focus. It wasn't that we weren't present in the community, but how do you have the community's voice at the table? Um, and then not mm -hmm. being a prescriptive organization, but being one that allows for the community to be one of the key stakeholders to drive what strategies mm -hmm. we should put in place mm -hmm. and one thing that um, you know I go up against all the time and you know our CEO knows this as well <laughs> and that is I try to be the voice of the community the mm -hmm. voice of those without a voice at the table sure and so sometimes that is a lonely place to be <laughs> um, because it's not that our priorities aren't always aligned it's just how we get there may not be aligned mm -hmm. and but however the community if the community is not bought into it then you're never going to be able to get upstream and realize the goal so what you what you begin to understand is that the community has to play a significant role and they have to have that voice because we know what's best for ourselves right mm -hmm. we, we do <laughs> know that mm -hmm. and so sometimes it's not even big things that need to be changed there's small things that need to be changed that can have great outcomes mm -hmm. and so you would be really surprised when you hear people say you know what if we just had a bus stop like five blocks from where I live, <laughs> that would change how I could go to work, um, how I go and get my um, food every day. Mm -hmm. Just, it runs the gamut. Mm -hmm. And so those little tweaks really make the difference for most individuals, but it has such significant impact mm -hmm. that it, because it changes a system that allows for all to have um, better outcomes. So you're listening for those little things, those yes. little subtle things that can make such a different impact or, yes. or a major impact. Yes. Wow, that's interesting. That's interesting. And uh, it, it, it sounds like um, what we consistently hear is listening, uh, not just paying lip service to, you know, having a community stakeholder at the table just so you can say, well, we had the community and this is what we decided. Um, so so that, that's that's very, very interesting. So can I add one other please, thing? Please, please. Um, because the other part about this, you know, I mentioned, you know, we have a really great staff. Mm -hmm. The AHA does have 60 plus multicultural directors across the country. So when you really wow. think about that they that these staff are situated in communities that have um, the greatest percentage of people of color mm -hmm. and they're the ones driving the strategies that we put forth from a national standpoint to, to drive impact, 
you can't there's not another organization that is doing that not even Absolutely. corporations sure so when you think about that that gives us the ability to work with the community and I will also say that you know our staff they are listening they're the ones bringing back the mm -hmm. proposed solutions from mm -hmm. the community mm -hmm. and hence why we work so closely with Trinity because Absolutely. we see Trinity as being one of the best models across the country for how you bridge um, health, um, community, faith, economics, it's all sure. intertwined because one cannot function alone. Mm -hmm. It all has to be integrated in order to, to have sustainable and great impact. And that's that culture of health yes. that, you're, that you all talk about a lot yes. uh, on your website and in all the things. Uh, talk a little bit about, well, give me your, your broad definition of health equity that we, we talked about in the simplest terms in case uh, viewers haven't heard that before. I've heard it a number of times. I've mm -hmm. heard different different definitions of it. But how does um, the Heart Association view health equity? You know, this is a very interesting question. Um, we're actually going through a very interesting time because we have not formalized a definition for health equity. Mm. Um, each organization um, has defined health equity differently. Mm -hmm. And so we've actually put together a task force that's been commissioned by our national board to come up with the definition of health equity and then also how we would address the social determinants of health. Okay. Now, from my perspective, and from my reading and, and as you look at how others have defined it, quite simply, it's having equal access, a level playing field. Mm -hmm. And I'll give a really great example, one that I shared with you earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have the ability to go to school, right? Our, mm -hmm. our kids, they have the ability to go to school. But do they go to schools that have the same toolkits? Um, to hold utilize? that thought, hold yes. that thought, hold yes, that thought. Yes, We've yes. got a caller. Yeah. Uh, caller. Give us, uh, give us your name, uh, give us uh, your question or your comment. Hi, uh, my name is Crystal, and I had a question for Ms. Johnson. Uh, Ms. Johnson, can you talk a little bit about the role that volunteers play or have played uh, in the shift that the Heart Association has made mm -hmm. in terms of being more aligned with, you know, and focused on the community? Uh, I know it's a volunteer organization, so I'd be interested to know what that looks like. Excellent question. Thank you for the call. That's a great question. You know what? The the our volunteers were the catalyst for us changing and shifting um, to really be even more community focused than what we were. Uh, we have a National Diversity Leadership Committee. Um, we also have multicultural leadership committees that each of those 60 plus staff that I mentioned earlier that are comprised of thought leaders and key stakeholders and business leaders across the country, they also sit on those committees, committees as well. So when you have the best and the brightest um, um, key opinion leaders in your community and at the national level that greatly influences how our national board actually makes decisions mm. and so if it were not for our volunteers quite frankly we wouldn't even have this department so wow. I, I think wow. it says a lot wow. for how powerful volunteers <clears throat> can be and it sounds like a, a, a great commitment that uh, the Heart Association has yes. made yes. that this isn't just a one-off kind of uh, thing to you know for for appearances but this is a deep dive and i didn't know that there were that many yes. 60, yeah, 60 uh, across, plus wow that, across the country that is amazing and i don't mm -hmm. want you to lose your thought about the analogy you made about education and yes. the equity um, about having resources yeah so you know the best example of equity to me is you know kids have the same opportunity to go to school but is that opportunity the same? No, it's not. Mm -hmm. So you could go to one high school and every kid in the classroom has a laptop that the school provides that's sitting right there on their desk. Mm -hmm. And when those kids go home, they have access to the internet, they have their own laptop, not just the one that the school has. Sure. But then you translate it, that into other communities where when they're going to school, they, they have older books, they don't have a laptop sitting on their um on their right. desk and then when they get home they may not even have a meal to eat mm -hmm. um, and they don't have Wi-Fi so they can't do whatever necessary work that they need to do so that is not equity it's when we all have the same ability or same access mm -hmm. and all of us having the same toolkit and I think that you know quite frankly when we do 
have the same access and the same toolkit, we can excel. We can compete. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. It's very the difficult. The comment, the comment that, we, that we talked about in the green room about the Olympics and how yes. well um, our brothers and sisters did and the comment yes. that Jesse Jackson made about um, when given a level, level playing, playing field, field. Yes. how we excel and at, 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 at levels never seen before. Right, and I think that that is, a, I think his analogy was great. Um, I think one of the things that we recognize, and I recognize even with my own child, mm -hmm. that it's the different opportunities and exposures that, that our kids have that others do not. You know, my son just came back from a week of camp, mm -hmm. and but he's been going to camp since he was first grade as a part of his, his school. Mm -hmm. But you think about that's not the same opportunity that most nope. kids have. But if they did have it, it would just open up their world about possibilities of the things Absolutely. that they could do. So very passionate about equity, very proud that the organization um, has made this commitment around equity. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, regardless of how people may feel from a political standpoint or whatever, we still end up paying when we have inequity. Absolutely. So really think Everybody about that. Pays. Everybody, everybody pays. Everybody pays. Absolutely. So you can, you can say, well, I don't think everybody should have equal access or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but at the end of the day, we'll still end up getting sick. We still have to go to the emergency room. We mm -hmm. still have to call upon our doctors, and it costs to do that. So at the end of the day, why not just have equity? Because then that gives everybody a fair shot at trying to have the best lives. Because we all want that. We no all we want, want the, the best, same thing. We, we all want the same, same thing that everybody families. else has. Exactly. We want the best for our kids. Sure. We want our kids sure. to go to school and to be the best they can be. We want to be the best professionals that we can be. Mm -hmm. So what is wrong? with that being the foundation by which we operate. So it does make me proud to work for the AHA in that sense. And it's great that an organization gets it um, in, 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 in that way. Um, you mentioned a phrase, social determinants so of health, mm -hmm. and I wanted to unpack that just a little bit um, because we were talking in the green room about, uh, I don't want to name the largest retail pharmacy uh, store in the country, but they recently closed their doors mm -hmm. in our community uh, and to the dismay of the community and, and the ripple effect. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about that in terms of a social determinant of, of, of health and, and, and what social determinants of health actually are? Yes, of course. So when you think about the determinants of health are those things that um, prohibit us from having good health outcomes. So that includes poverty, education, mm -hmm. transportation, housing, quality health care, access to fresh fruits and vegetables. So mm -hmm. when you talk about a pharmacy removing itself from a community, then that means that a whole entire neighborhood that comprises thousands of people no longer have access to the basic needs that for their basic needs to be met. Mm -hmm. And that's an injustice. That is a health justice issue. And so when you think about that, then let's talk about then how can it become an opportunity mm -hmm. so you know a lot of times we think about things from a negative standpoint and i'll say oh, we've we got a call. caller yeah. hello caller give us your question or comment hi there miss johnson can you tell us what are your priorities for impacting multicultural communities Oh, great question. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, well, well, this is great. Sure. Yeah, awesome. yeah, we got some um, knowledgeable <laughs> callers, too. Um, so for the Heart Association, our priorities for multicultural is around improving our environments, so creating healthy living environments. So a lot of what I'm talking about, the social determinants of health. So being able to have um, access to quality care, um, access to quality foods. The second is around CPR. So making sure that we are trained on CPR, um, an interesting stat, and I'll give you this, and that is less than 50% of blacks and Hispanics actually have CPR performed on them if they have an incident. Mm. And whereas our white counterparts, 80% of them actually have CPR performed. So there is a huge disparity. So we have to get trained on CPR. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, transforming our communities. How do we drive those um, 
those determinants that can best work to transform our communities. And so a lot of that has to do with um, economic development. It has mm -hmm. to do with skills building. So all <coughs> those elements help to um, make our communities better. So those are our three key priorities for the multicultural team at the American Heart Association. Excellent question. And, and you know, as it relates to the example I gave about the now yes. vacant store, mm -hmm. would the Heart Association be an advocate for economic development? in a community that they know is going to be decimated by the absence of something so vital as a, a pharmaceutical a pharmacy store in their in their neighborhood most definitely and you know what we have a powerful voice and as a community and what we have to learn is to become our best own advocates and so one of the things that Absolutely. the AHA does is that we do have a whole advocacy team so just becoming a part of our um, you're the cure network mm -hmm. then we are able to when we go to lobby day we advocate for healthy food financing, um, advocating for um, transportation, mm -hmm. advocating for um, um, fruits and vegetables and quality care to mm -hmm. be in our communities. So that's how we can make changes. And so if we can work really to become the community voice, take our community voice and become advocates, mm -hmm. that's how we can make a, make an impact. Amazing, amazing. And that's, that's wonderful. You mentioned uh, working with Trinity and I wanted to make yes. sure in the five minutes that we have left that you uh, made uh, a statement about the uh, upcoming event that you're doing with the First Lady, uh, yes. Monica Moss. Uh, yes. You want to talk about the, uh, I think it's the... Are empowered to serve. Yes, yes. Yeah, so it's going to be a part of the Monica's, um, the First Lady's initiative mm -hmm. um, that um, really focuses on people understanding their numbers. So they'll get health screenings that day okay. um, from blood pressure, glucose for diabetes, um, understanding their BMI. And then the Heart Association, um, working with our local staff here in Chicago, mm -hmm. they will uh, come in and provide um, lessons each week, like how to actually prepare healthy meals. And do it on a budget mm -hmm. um, to be more physically active, not just for you, but then also with your um, also with your family. And then also we will have um, distributing our healthy cookbook, our healthy soul food cookbook. So it's not about, oh, I'm not, I have to eat healthy food. So that means that it's not good. That is not accurate. We have really <laughs> tasty recipes and you can actually see um, the cover of our cookbook where you do have great tasting food that, that really makes a makes a difference for people because we like taste right we like things absolutely that taste good. absolutely um, we're looking we're, we're looking actually at uh i think is this Monica's, yeah, Monica is featured in the cookbook. Yeah. Um, and as you know, she is a big proponent of healthy eating. And so we wanted to make sure that we showcased her as one of our um, national ambassadors, national spokespersons for the American Heart Association. So honored to have her uh, leading the charge in that area. You know, uh, I actually went to the doctor today. And oh, um, let's hear the results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, went, <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that I had my annual checkup. And one of the things that was different about that today was that my doctor advised me after everything was said and done about eating fruits and vegetables and exercising 30 minutes a day That's and I, he had never said that to me before and I and I found that and I and I I said well I wonder if the medical community has gotten the message about preventative medicine and, yes. and, and being more proactive in preventing uh, yes. what's happening. Now, what he told me took all of five or ten minutes, but it, it, was a, it was a shift from, you know, just walking in, taking my temperature and walking out. And, you know, in our community, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a stigma with African-American men who, who yes. don't go and get, you know, regular checkups. And uh, I can tell you this farmer's market has really, I mean, I'm buying more. I, I always yes. like, you know, fruits and vegetables. I'm buying a lot more of them. And when you go to the doctor, it's always, it, it feels like, you know, you know, you have to show what homework you've been doing by your by your medical condition. So I, I'd like to um, talk about in, in the fat last minute uh, that we have about our farmers market and working with with you um, beyond the farmers market uh, to sustain the work that we're doing right now yes. in the market. 
You know what? We look forward to working together. Okay. Um, it is about having a, a curriculum mm -hmm. in place, mm -hmm. um, not just for churches, but then for any housing communities. But they all should work together. So as a member of Trinity, I really am a huge advocate of coming out and supporting the farmers markets um, because we will teach you how to use those um, fruits and vegetables that you see. And um, because you may learn something new and you find out, oh, wow, I really love avocados. I really love um, the way you put grapefruit in a salad. Well, I just want to I just want to say find out more about that um, next week. Thank you yes. so much, Pamela, for being here. And we will see you for by any greens necessary. Uh, good night.